back at Gamescom, we got to check out over 50 different games. And that's a lot to try and put out on a YouTube channel. So what we thought we would do is just do a roundup of a few of them in one video to make it a bit easier. And then we'll probably do a few of these just to kind of clean up some of the titles that either we no longer have embargoes on or that just we weren't able to get full interviews and just kind of our coverage on them would be a bit less. Some of the games we saw were presentations and there's not really much we can do there apart from just talk about it for a few minutes. And I say we for once because I'm actually not alone. Normally I just talk into a void myself. But at Gamescom, Rin, who if you're from our community, she's my lovely partner, uh, actually got to check out some of the games on her own. And some of them we handled together. So me and her are just going to kind of sit here, talk about what we saw, and just chat for like 20, 30 minutes about several different games. I think she's here somewhere. Hi. Hi, I'm here. Excellent. There we go. <laughs> Mike issues sorted. Picking one of the first games that we saw at the beginning of the show, I want to just talk about Warframe for a little bit, which you have like no experience with Warframe, right? My Warframe experience is, is very less, but I was um, interested in what we got to see. Yeah, because we got to check out the 1999 thing, which so Warframe tells like big updates. They're not like WoW where they have, you know, like big box release. They, they have like their big update expansions. And so 1999 is coming out in this winter and is dealing with like traveling back into the past and dealing with Y2K. And you got to see things like the really cool motorcycle. That motorcycle looked so fun. Like they were just driving it around, having fun, doing fast jumping and barrel rolls and just tricks. And there were cool skins. I'm very excited about the motorbike. It reminded me a lot of Fortnite as well. Like the fact that you could do like just drifting and little stunts on the bike, which I know that's a weird comparison to make, but it works in my brain. So I'm just going to with it we got to check out the kumi and the five fates update as well and like the skins from that looked great there was uh we'll put up some concept art for them and the the skins from 1999 are going to have like shifting features so they've got faces now i'm not sure like, like i'm not going to get into the whole tenno human thing we're going to avoid that conversation because like i don't want to have it but but for someone who didn't know anything about warframe going in when it's like oh they're going to the past and like they're doing all this stuff did you think there was like a cool setting to go from a sci-fi thing into the past yeah i think like when you've got when you've got a setting that's very sci-fi and you're trying to put some let's let's say retro 1999 is retro that makes me just feel old but when you've got this like retro mashup, it's awesome to see how they're integrating them together. And I think this is the first time they've done like human faces on the Warframes. And it's some characters that you knew before. You're going back in the past to find a, a doctor, I believe. Yeah, it's... Doctor Doctor Entrati, um, who is a character like if you're into the Warframe lore, then you know like the man in the wall and like Doctor Entrati and all this stuff. But for you, it must have just been like talking gibberish, which must have been fun to listen to. It's, it's not gibberish like i'm i'm used to like we need to go and talk back into the past and we need to do something but i i obviously don't know the man in the wall um i was interested when uh, rebecca was talking about it and she said like you're gonna meet someone you know um who, who looks like meg but she she's not meg yet and that just sounds very like catchy yeah so we got to talk to rebecca who's the creative director which if you know warframe you know who that is and she was really excited to just kind of show off all this stuff and talk about like how they're trying to tell a unique story, how they always try to shape their uh, patches so that like there's something for the veterans and something for new players because like aspirational content is important for them. That there has to be a clear path. One of the things that they're trying to work on is fixing lapsed players. So I'm a lapsed player which meant that coming back was really confusing to me because I wasn't sure what I could do, where I could go. And so they're trying to work on that as they know that that's a little bit of a weakness. But one of the huge things that I want to talk about just before we move on was that like you said that there's this retro aspect of 1999 and we all turn to dust when we think about it. But they're doing this weird dating sim where you can date Ben Starr or Clive from Final Fantasy. And... Um, like this M you can like MSN messenger him oh my gosh yeah and like that's that's so stupid to me and brilliant like what how else would you send flirty messages to someone in 1999 than over AOL and MSN messenger I'm so excited to relive my past of you know like nudging people and and oh great having so many emojis in your uh, username 
And, and like star, the, star heart, Rin star heart. And you've got to have like the stylized letters, right? You've got to have like calligraphy name that some people oh, can't read. People who could do that were so cool. While Warframe was great, there was more that we saw at Gamescom. Like I said, 50 different titles. And one of the ones that you got to see that I didn't get to see because I had to go elsewhere. And you had to spend like 20 minutes trying to get there because the crowds were awful. Whereas you got to go and check out Genshin and like 5.0. Is that right? Yeah, I got to go see Genshin Impact Natland, the 5.0 release. And oh my gosh, if there's if you're a Genshin fan and you're at Gamescom, that booth is insane. There are so many cool people in cosplay. It's so popular. So it was a real treat to get to go and, and see Natland and, and in, enjoy the atmosphere. Because I think Genshin's a, a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But for me, it's just it's my calm, chill out exploration game. I'm not going to be the person to tell you like, oh, this is the the perfect team that you need to make of your characters. But yeah, it was just great to see what they've done with this expansion. We're going to the the Sixth Nation, which is the Nation of Dragons, and you've got to love some dragons. <laughs> you you had um you had a moment where you kind of went away from Genshin, and then you came back, and you were just like, I don't know why I stopped playing, right? So what was it like like seeing this new stuff and all these new areas and. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Did, had it changed much? Were you just like, my God, or were you like, this is this is more Genshin? They're just building on what they already had. For me, it just it felt like more Genshin. Like I I hadn't stopped playing for long enough where it was a different game. It's just a game that has you know nicer features, cooler characters. Uh, uh... Yeah, just just expanded on what they had. Yeah. So I got to play as three of the new characters they're releasing. Um, and all three, their attacks had really interesting tra traversal mechanics to it. They weren't static, you were moving. I think um, Mulani, the, the water character, she just she gets on a shark like um, board and she's surfing around while attacking these characters. And just, they were all so fun. And still, I knew how to play them. I, like, they still follow the Genshin rules. They all have great traversal, like um, Kinich, the, the guy, he's like a retro guy. He, like, grapples onto someone and kind of circles them and shoots them and it just feels so much more dynamic in in the fighting there, there was um something i saw you playing because because 5.0 is out now and something i've seen you playing on and i'm guessing you got to test it back then was like there's dinosaurs lizards like the saurian thing what what are they yeah you so one of the first things um i got to do when i was playing was um part of the quest was i met um a baby little baby soren who is this little like dinosaur looking guy and he's he's cute and i i got to name him which took me quite a while because i found naming characters are one of the hardest things in any game destructor um, the end bringer there you go named done move, move uh, on where, where did you and destructor the end bringer go well, me, me and Nibbles, <laughs> we um, we went around and I got the ability to transform into a Sauron myself. So I was the, the Earth type, which is a Teplosaurus. And I just, I spent so much time being this dinosaur. Like it, it walks, well, I say, should say dragon. It walks quite slowly, but it has the ability that it can dive underground. And you're basically like swimming and jumping through the ground and you can go up cliffs, which is so much nicer than like climbing up cliffs, cliffs or trying to find grapple points i was just living my my dragon life diving up a cliff there's um what was the thing i see you doing there was like a speed challenge thing yeah so like genshin has a, a bunch of challenges um it's part of the game anyway but for some of the speed challenges I got to do, you can transform into these different Saurons in the challenge. So I did one where I started as the, the Earth one, and then I transformed into the Air one to grapple through the air to just have more fun completing these challenges they have around the world. It just it makes the world come to life more. Okay, and now of the characters that you saw, which of the one was your favourite? Oh, I Every time I try and pick one, I can't. Like, I love them all. Like, there's Kachina, who is the cute little Geo girl, and I just I was just running around as her because she was so so adorable. Her little arms are waving. I love fighting as Kinich. He was super fun with his retro cyber aesthetic. And then I don't know. I just yeah. If you're attacking with a shark surfboard, I mean, how do you pick? <laughs> I I need to get you playing uh, Zen or Zen Zero. Like I think you'd really enjoy that one as well because that's that's the one that I go to more than Genshin. Uh, but we should like move on to a different title. So like let's let's go from something cute to an anime. 
to something else that's cutesy in anime. Let's talk about Exoborn. Which, that was one that we both got to check out. And we managed to sit down and do, uh, there was a presentation. We didn't get any gameplay, unfortunately, no hands-on. But we did get to watch someone else play. And we got to ask a few questions. And Exoborn is an upcoming three versus many other teams of three extraction shooter. Which, I like extraction shooters just a little bit. Like is an understatement. Yeah, all right. But, but like, ho hopefully I won't spend too much money on this one, which would be the first time that's ever happened. Um, but it was it was great to see another extraction shooter coming. Like, I, it's a genre that I really enjoy. That and Battle Royales just kind of scratch a nice itch for me. And I'm a big proponent of mixing PvE and PvP. Like, I, I see it as, like, chocolate and peanut butter. And I understand some people want those kept separate, or maybe they have a nut allergy, but I'm totally okay with them being combined and you having this game where you have to like run around, kill PvE stuff, get some loot, and then you have to like, you know, fight to survive and try and extract and actually get out. And it seems like they're doing cool things with the weather features as well. Something that's always really interesting to me whenever we go to these presentations, and I'm sure how you feel about this, is they spend a lot of time talking about like world building and lore and stuff. And and it would be great. Like I'm okay with that. But it's like if we went to go and see Fortnite before it came out and they were just talking to us about the lore of Fortnite. Like, I I understand the lore. I want it to be there. I want you to have a setting that you've actually put time and effort and thinking into but for a lot of players when it comes to a battle royale or a extraction game they just want to shoot people yeah i think that's a, a pretty fair assessment because i'm more pve than pvp so for me i always love world building and story and there was a, a decent amount in this with you know how how the rigs work how the world got to how it is but I mean, in this kind of game, it's just you know how do how do I get in and start killing people and get in my loot? <laughs> yeah, like one of the one of the crazy things is that for me it's like well I want to know questions like what's the time to kill, what's the server going to be like, how long is a is a run, like um, do I have safe pockets, how many people are going to be on the map, all these kind of questions, and. and there are like the other kind of players who are like, well, what's the world like? What's the environment like? What PVE activities am I going to be doing? And so you really kind of are uh, uh, spoiled for choice in what you get to ask and what you get to just talk about with them. It's interesting to see the balance as well, because PVE, VP, you can't have too much of one or the other. No, this is something that when talking about the cycle, which is a game that I miss deeply, uh, I was always talking about how in a game like that, you need to add more PvE. Because PvE will always exist. Like, if you give people guns and you put them in a map, they're going to be psychopaths and they're going to try and kill each other. So if you add more PvE activities for them to fight over, they're going to fight over them. But if you keep the PvE the same and all you're doing is adding new guns, that to me is the wrong direction to kind of be leaning your focus in. Some new guns is great and like new weapons and that kind of stuff it keeps things fresh but you need new activities to fight over there has to be a purpose for you to use those guns because otherwise people will get bored these days and go play something else but they have added um a lot for pve with the kind of the nature and they have like, these big tornadoes and i can decide like do i want to mod my suit to be able to ground myself in a tornado or do i want to fly around and run away so they are thinking about how the PvE works and yeah. the decisions you make for like what risks do you take to get out the, the gear that you want to get out. Yeah, uh, it's quite interesting also to see that they, like, like one of the questions that I asked them was because they came from making Vampire Blood Hunt and now they're making an extraction shooter, I was like, how do you do this? And their answer was like with uh, great enthusiasm and fearlessness. Yeah, that was it. And, it, and it's like, yeah, because 
Both of those genres are really intimidating and hard to get into because the player bases are very fickle in some ways, but also very hard set in what they want in others. And so you've got to really try and kind of balance that. And so it's really interesting to see where this is going to go. But they're going to have like uh, your base rig, three extra rigs. They're all going to be different things. Like you've got the Viper, the Kestrel, and the Kodiak, and they are like light, medium, heavy. You've got a safe pocket only on your default rig, which I think is great because I don't like the idea of uh, secure loot boxes on rigs. And they're focusing on the concept of prepare, traverse, acquire, and extract with skills, which very clearly is inspired by Blood Hunt. And they're also going to like be mixing in, you know, weapons and all that other kind of stuff. So it's, yeah, I could spend like half an hour talking about this game on its own, but there wasn't there wasn't enough for us to be able to share yet. It would just be talking about theory. So we should probably move on and talk about something else. What was the uh, the next game that we got to see after that one? Can you remember? I believe that was Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Oh, yeah, Kingdom Come, which we we were meant to have an interview for. We ended up just getting a preview. So we may have an interview later. We're not sure. That may come after because games come and packs and everything get in the way. But... Yeah, you got to play it, right? Because there wasn't enough computers for us both to, so you got the hands-on for that one. Yeah, I got to have the fun and play the game. Um, for an hour, I got to, to sit on the PC and play Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. I got to play through some quest lines, which was great because before I started, they, they sat us down and said, like, you're going to have some choices in these quest lines, but please, like, pick these certain choices because... The game is so open that if you pick a different choice, you're going to go to a completely different town and it's about a three hour detour, a different route from the quest that we want you to play today, which to me, that was just like mind blowing of I can make a choice and I'm doing something else for three hours. Yeah, they, so you ended up doing a quest that was, if I'm wrong on any of this, correct me, but I think I'm, I think I remember it correctly, which is you were doing a quest that involved you having a little sword fighty thing, and then they wanted you to steal a sword from a building and then like yep. ha hang it up. And you can decline during like the sword fight at the beginning, or you can say nothing. And if you chose one of those options, they end up getting like kicked out of the town. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like a three hour long quest a quest of like this thing. And they were using it as an example of showing how different and how impactful some of the choices were. Because if you did what you were meant to do, then you know, you stay in the vill uh, in the town or in the village and you then do the little quest line. And so that's a real like sharp change between the two. Yeah. So I, I think it was it was interesting because I was sword fighting with um, a guy and we got told off because we're not supposed to be doing that. And I think the way I res responded to the guard really decided on what I was going to end up doing for the next few hours of my life. Um, but I say I ended up um, having to kind of steal this sword for so they could display it. And I had the option of I can, you know, change it to nighttime because there's less people at nighttime. So I can sneaky sneak my way around and lockpick doors. Um, and it was, yeah, it was really fun. My only issue is that I may have accidentally punched a peasant in the face and um, I had to run away from guards for quite a while. It was it was really interesting to see the, the ramifications of my actions. Um, and I, say I had fun with it. I had fun with the combat. I believe it's quite similar, but a bit of an upgrade to the first one. Um, I can't fully judge the game yet because obviously I only got an hour and it's it's a it's a massive game so I, I'd be interested to see how it develops and how how players feel about it but I, I have a feeling that if you like the first one you'll like the second one yeah that's something that's always interesting to me I think we'll probably mention it again when we talk about metaphor re Fantasio, which we both got to play and both absolutely loved but it's the aspect of like you get an hour of a hundred hour game how are you meant to gauge what this 100 hour experience is going to be especially when there's something so open and like so many different choices or you think there are many choices do the choices actually matter is it an illusion like you don't until you actually see the bigger picture you can't see there's, there's a lot of world building i spent a lot of time talking to to some people and, and like making some allies which you know i would love to see how that's gonna go but i don't didn't get the time 
that was again something we had in metaphor like using it as good comparison because it was again like it's going to be a hundred hour rpg but we didn't get to the final boss in our playthrough because we were too busy actually reading stuff and there are people who did get to the boss in the session that we were in only did so because they skipped through all of the cutscenes and so it's like well choices i guess but yeah we should move on and talk about another game uh i want to talk about star trucker which just came out and so i want to just mention it because i think it's a really quaint kind of like chill that that nice like relaxed vibe to it trucks in space yeah trucks in space and so the game is out you can go play it now and we got to talk to the, the team before and, and like just kind of check it out a little bit and it feels like they kind of wanted to nail that truck vibe in space rather than going for space and trucks they're like there's a cb radio the call signs are all like truck stuff they had like uh they commissioned radio stations that sound authentic they wanted the i remember yeah i think they actually pushed back they wanted like less alien conspiracy and more like breaker breaker i've i've broken down yes. on route five <laughs> Le less uh, less Futurama, more Convoy. Was Convoy. How I want, uh, how I wanted it. But what was the wording they used? They said that they wanted um, not immersive, but they wanted like interactive gameplay or whatever it was, because they want you to actually. Uh, they wanted you to feel like you're a trucker, that it's authentic and grounded. And yeah. They, they want humor, but they want built-in humor, like Ghostbusters, where everyone is taking their job seriously. Like this is a real job. But if you step back, you're like trucks in space. What? Yeah, uh, but you're like you you actually have to go outside and fix the air leak. You have to move around the cargo. Like you can see the cargo in the cargo hold. And there was other games that we can't talk about that mentioned this same kind of concept where they want you to actually be able to see the items and they they that tactile uh like that tactile kind of feedback response of like you can see how much cargo you have in your hold. They want you to interact with it. They want you to go out and they want you to fix the air, uh, like the the um, hull breaches and stuff by actually interacting with them. And that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, they have, they have different trailers, right? The the truck will feel different depending on what you're you're pulling. Yeah, which was which was really great, right? Like it's it's fun. I ended up ejecting myself out of the airlock while not wearing a spacesuit and got an achievement for it. Uh, if you want to play it, like I said, it's out now, and it's definitely something worth picking up. Hopefully we get to do a little video on it, just on its own, and show it off a little bit, as it's very, very fun, but it just depends on time at this point. But yeah. Also, awesome, like, that was a very small team that made this game. Yes, it was. Uh, two main guys and a core of, like, I think four or five. Four or five people, like, that's a very small game for what they, like, had like set out to to work on like space is hard yeah especially when they they ended up like it, it has that cool newtonian physics thing of you can turn the stabilizers off and you're just spinning forever which was really great i actually almost forgot to mention that so thank you that was you've always got to helpful. mention newtonian physics in a space game you do there are certain people in our community who i know who instantly buy any game that includes the concept of newtonian physics because they're just like i like space and it's like cool Enjoy that. I like spinning into endlessness. <laughs> At least they have an air break in this, which, uh, if you like, I'm not sure if I died or if the air break made me black out, but I put the air break at one point and my screen went dark, so that was fun. But yeah, so there you go. That was Exoborn, Kingdom Come Deliverance, Genshin Impact, Star Trucker, and Warframe. Five games. Look at that in one video. Nice and easy. Yeah, hopefully you we enjoyed. Did it. We did. Hopefully you enjoyed some of these. Feel free to leave a comment, talk about any of these games, ask questions, we'll try and answer them as best we can, and uh, we'll do another one of these with another few titles, and we'll see you then. So, uh, thank you, question mark, be good people, exclamation mark, <laughs> bye. Thanks everyone.